When I first bought a camera, I didn't know that this tool would change my life forever. Actually, when I bought my camera, I didn't know how the thing worked at all. But I know why I bought it. I stopped my studies for a year to become a student representative. And I was in a board of students and I wanted to document that year. Not only for myself, but also to be able to share it with my friends and my family so they could see what I was experiencing every day. And I knew it was a special year, so I wanted to have to document for the future and to share it also with the other people that might follow my position. So sharing was very important for me. Sharing made me uh, feel that it had some purpose. Not only what I was doing, but also the photos that I was taking and that I could show other people. Now in the time of film, it was very expensive. Film is expensive, developing expensive is expensive, and it takes a lot of time. But the first time I bought my digital camera, everything changed. You know, it went from days to a couple of minutes for sharing my photos. And people liked my work, and before I knew it, they wanted to, to pay me for it. They wanted to hire me to take their photos. Now, why am I telling you this? Because this is a story you can hear from every photographer that made his living out of his hobby. I'm telling you this because I didn't have the intention, the intention to make money with my photography. I just wanted to be able to walk around, meet inspiring people, go to inspiring places, and to share what I saw and what I experienced with other people. And that's what I've been doing the last couple of years, and that's the 11,000 plus photos you can use for free on my Flickr stream and that are being reused by Wikipedia and other projects and that end up in publications, newspapers, paid and non-paid, all over the world. The biggest publication I had so far was in an American magazine with uh, 8 million copies being distributed. And they didn't have to pay me for using my photos. Now the first time that somebody wanted to hire me, I had to think about what kind of payment would I want out of it? Do I want them to pay me for the use of the photo or for something else? And I didn't want my photos to be sold to an organization or to someone that would put them in a cabinet where they would collect dust or become obsolete within a matter of months. And I didn't want to think about who was using my photo, where he was using it, and how many times, and for what period, and in what size, because this how a lot of photographers determine the price that they're asking for their pictures. You know, it, for me it's all kind of negative energy to hunt down the abusers and to see where my photos are being used. I just want them to be used. You know, I'd rather be glad if my work is being shown by other people to other people than getting mad. But that meant that I had to think about distribution and business models and licensing models. And those were things I never heard before, heard of before, because you know it was just a hobby before. And that's the exact same moment that I saw the talk of Lawrence Lessig about how law is strangling creativity. I felt like one of those creative peoples where the law is strangling not only me, but also strangling the people that I wanted to allow to use my photos. And he was talking about Creative Commons, a license that you can use to let other people reuse, remix, and republish your photos. So instead of saying, no, you can't use my material, you're saying, yes, you can use it under these circumstances, or if you apply to these rules. And commons is like the air and the trees around us. It's from us all. And with Creative Commons, you can do the same to the photos and videos, to text, and even to music, and to share with the people around you. So that's what I started doing. I started asking my clients, do you allow me to share some of the work that I made for you with the rest of the world? And it's a small part, so if I go somewhere and take 200 photos, then I'll publish like 40, and they'll get the 200. 
and the rest of the photos, they decide when they want to publish it, when they want to release it. And platforms like Flickr and Vimeo made it really easy for me because they have the option to publish your material with these licenses. Uh, YouTube has even adapted Creative Commons licenses. So it's becoming easier for creators like me to send out my material to the world so other people can find it. I don't have to publish it on my own website, which is not that hard to find, but you have to know my name. And on these platforms, it's easy to find all that content. And once it's published, it's irrevocably publicly released. When a piece of work is published on a Creative Commons license, there's no way you can take it back anymore. It's out there. That's also why I give the option to my clients that if they want to share the work under their control, that once they publish a photo that hasn't been, full, hasn't been published before, it's there for everyone again. It's like the air again. Now that's kind of scary to do at first. Because I was thinking too, what if someone else started selling my work? What if someone would make a book with my photos and then make money out of it? You know, that's not what I wanted to do, that people would be doing. I want something to do. I want some part of that money too. So I started with the most restrictive license. This is the Creative Commons by non-commercial, no derivatives license. You cannot change the work. I am a photographer and this is how I see my work. You cannot cut it, you cannot make it black and white if it's in color and all those kinds of rules. And I don't want you to earn any money out of it. Well, actually, it took me a couple of years to learn something about this license. First, there was this guy and he's 10 years younger than I am. He's an active Wikipedian, someone that edits on Wikipedia. And he was telling me, I like your photos, but because of the license you're using, I can't use it on Wikipedia. So actually, I was creating my own cabinet where my photos were collecting dust. People could see them only on my Flickr stream, but they couldn't reuse it and remix it on the bigger platforms that really added value to my work. The second thing I learned is if somebody would make a book out of my photos, I can copy that out again. I can even make it better because I am the source. So I could determine what photos to use and also start selling books, maybe in a higher quality or with my selection. And the third thing I learned is why should I limit someone to do something like that? If somebody is very good at bookmaking, and he can make a book with my photos, and I'm not able to do that same thing, why should I limit that person to earn some money with my work? Because, you know, I like it when somebody is uh, very good at something, and if I can give him the sources to do it with that, why not? So that's why I changed my license. There's another license in between this, but that's why I changed my license to the most free one. You only have to mention my name and the license, because if you mention my name, people know where the source is. And if you mention the license, they also know that they can reuse it again. Now, this is just one story. I'm just one guy having this as a business model, because organizations just hire me by the hour to make work for them. And as far as I know, I'm the only person in the Netherlands, as a photographer, that's using this as a business model. Most photographers call me crazy, that I'm giving my stuff away. And every time I talk to a photographer, he says, well, that's not going to be future-proof. You'll be out of business with, by the end of the year. And by doing this, you are destroying the market. Well, actually, the last one makes me proud, because, you know, if I'm destroying a market, I don't feel responsible for keeping up a market that's already broken. So technology has made it so easy for people to make photos and to sell them and to distribute them. There's no need to hang on to old models. The photographers that are complaining to me, they've seen their income steadily uh, diminishing in the last few years. They've seen their working hours go up 
to have the same income as they had before. And most importantly, they've seen their motivation for their work go down. For them, it went from play to work. As for me, by giving my work away, I've seen my working hours being pretty steady. I've seen my motivation going up. And for the last five years, I've been doing this full time for four to five years now. I've seen my income grow too. But you know, it, it takes courage. For those people that are complaining to me have been doing the same for several years, sometimes even for 20, maybe 30 years. And it takes courage or stupidity to change something that's been working in the past for you. But it also takes courage to, um, to see that something is broken and is not working anymore for you. Because you know, those people are in a negative spiral and it's hard to step out of a spiral like that. Now there's one thing that I don't get. If these things are not working anymore, then why are we still teaching them? Why aren't we teaching people that they have the option to choose their business model? That they have the option to choose their licensing model and their distribution model? That they have the option to keep doing what they love if they change the way that they're doing things that's around it? So you don't only choose a profession, like being a photographer, but that you also make a very good choice about the business model that you're using, the distribution model that you're using, and the licensing models that you're using. Because you don't have to change your profession if you are being flexible with those other things. I want to thank you for listening to my story. But not only to listening to this, I hope that you uh, know that you have a choice too, but I hope that you help me, just like my photos, spread this message and influence other people to make their choice. Thank you.